Now, a probe which has been snoozing through space three billion miles from Earth for eight years will be woken up today to prepare for its encounter with Pluto. Astrophysicist and journalist Sarah Craddis is here to uh, talk us through all of this. So it's been sort of hovering around for eight years, but now it's actually going to do what it was set up to in the yeah, first place. Yeah, so this probe launched in 2006, January 2006, and when it was launched, Pluto was still a planet. But we, of course, now know that Pluto's been downgraded. It's what's called a dwarf planet. So when it launched, this mission was to go to the then planet Pluto. It travelled across our solar system. It got to the planet Jupiter, where it used the energy from Jupiter to get some more force to carry it on its journey. It was then put to sleep. And today, later on today, it's going to be woken up. It's been woken up periodically across its journey just mm. to check it's still there, it's still alive. But today, it finally wakes up. And in January, it's actually going to get to Pluto, the dwarf planet, which we know nothing about. We've never sent a spacecraft that far. And well, we sent a spacecraft that far into space, but never to Pluto. So we're going to hopefully learn a lot more about Pluto. And actually, since this mission launched, Pluto had three moons when it launched, um, and it was a planet. Now it has five moons, and it's no longer a planet. We think there's lots of other very similar objects to Pluto out there in the solar system beyond the planet Neptune so very very far away these small kind of rocky bodies so Pluto is going to uh, this probe New Horizons 2015 is going to Pluto it's going to understand more about Pluto and more about all of Pluto's brothers and sisters so all the objects around Pluto which look very very similar so we know that it's been downgraded it's not a planet anymore but we still call it the dwarf planet yes, so it still has certain characteristics it's the first of a new kind so I think the problem is um, with science we're learning we know so little about the universe. I mean, we've never been to our own, much of our own solar system, and this mission is kind of on par with the early missions to Venus or to the planet Mars in the 70s. And yes, it is a dwarf planet, but I think as humans, we kind of want to categorize things, so we've just said mm. planets and stars, but what we're actually learning about the solar system is that things don't really fit into neat little boxes that we might want them to. So. Yes, we thought Pluto was a planet. Then in 2006, just after this mission launched, scientists discovered another very similar body to Pluto, which was ever so slightly bigger. And then we found a third thing. And what we now know is that beyond the planet Neptune, so the furthest gas planet away from us, there's this kind of rocky belt with around 100,000 objects, some of them the same size of Pluto, which we just didn't really know much about until recently. So this is going to be really significant, isn't it? It's going to be groundbreaking. The first time we'll be able to examine Pluto in this sort of detail. Yeah, I mean, for example, Pluto, most planets orbit in a rough circle around the sun. Pluto's orbit is much more of an elliptical, and when it gets close to the sun, we think it gets an atmosphere, and then when it's further away from the sun, it's just this frozen um, nitrogen body. So it's really interesting to understand more about it. And yes, these things cost money. It's around half a billion pounds it's cost, but it's really pushing the limits of what we know about our own solar system. And just to be clear, it's not actually going to land on the on dwarf planet, just, just get really close to it. It's going to get pictures. really close, and we haven't really got any really high quality pictures of Pluto yet. We don't know what's there. It's then going to study these other similar objects to Pluto, these other dwarf planets, and then the probe's going to carry on out of our solar system to join Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. So, so it's really quite incredible for science, the fact that we're able to get to a planet or a body that, that's mm. far away. Very exciting. I know Stephen Dixon will be at home listening to every single thing. Space, they? <laughs> um, and how is uh, Rosetta doing now? What's the progress on that? Okay, well, Philae, the little lander which fell asleep, which landed on Rosetta, is still asleep. But the actual Rosetta mission, I mean, I just think there's been so many great space stories around recently, and Rosetta really captured everyone's mm. imagination. So Rosetta, the actual main spacecraft, is still orbiting around this comet, shuramenko Jarosmenko. It's very difficult to say name. It's named after the people <laughs> who discovered it. And that's going to follow the comet as its tail starts to form as we get close to the sun. So we're going to be getting images next year of a tail actually forming around a comet, more data to come back from the mission to understand more about the actual comet itself. And hopefully the little lander Philae, when we get close to the sun in March, might actually get enough energy to wake, wake up. up. Yeah, so it, it might not be the end of Philae. We might get more information back from it. And we've had so many space stories recently. We've had the Orion splashdown. And uh, I mean, why are, why are there so many space missions going right now? I think because we're in the future, clearly. I think... Um, Maybe there's more awareness as well. I mean, space um, has really started to recapture everyone's imagination. And we kind of had a lull after the moon landings. Then we had the shuttle era. And it didn't really capture everyone's imagination in the same way. But now we're looking. NASA is very seriously looking at sending humans to an asteroid and eventually to the planet Mars. 
China is rising as a space nation. They hopefully want to send human beings to our own moon within the next decade or so. So that will be a huge achievement. So there's lots more going on and there's lots more interest. And then you've also got the rise of commercial companies. So unfortunately, there was that crash with Virgin Galactic, but they're still carrying yeah. on. They're building a new spaceship and they're really trying the to send humans continues. up. Well, yeah, and there's, okay. there's so many people who are dedicated to what they're doing. So, Carlos, thank you very much for your expertise. Thank you for thank coming you. in.